So welcome to this video. I'll be taking this video on taking you through um, five mark justified questions. Now, for those of you who don't know, the new syllabus for IGCSE geography is starting soon. In fact, from September, well, certainly from 2025, but the first exam being 2027. If you look at the specimen paper, they are asking these five mark justified questions, which haven't really appeared in the old current syllabus that's ending in 2026. However, based on the November 2024 series only, lots of justify questions were being asked and they were almost never asked in any previous exam paper. So in preparation for the new syllabus and bear in mind in preparation for what could come up in preparation for the new syllabus, I'm going to go through how to approach these questions. So we'll go through together the syllabus requirements, maybe a little bit touching on geographical theory and giving you some points to consider when structuring a five mark response. How to use this content, please do play, pause if you don't understand anything, rewind to recap and have a go in with using the various past papers. So justify, what does the old syllabus say compared to the new syllabus? Well, this is what they mean by justify, support a case with evidence or arguments. And in the new syllabus, this is exactly the same. But what's frustrating, what it doesn't actually tell you with this definition is that you need to give the advantages and disadvantages. If you look at the past papers that use these, look at the mark schemes, they expect you to give, I suppose you could argue with the argument, but you need to make sure you give both advantages and disadvantages. So types of justify questions is pretty much you might either select the solution to say why it's chosen or apply theory to say why a, chose, a solution was chosen. And in doing so, you need to give state advantages and disadvantages, either state advantages and disadvantages of a solution that's been um, chosen for you or compare a plan and compare it against all the other different plans before you decide which one's the best at the expense of the others. So, one of the types of questions is you've been told what the plan is and you need to justify why that decision was taken. So to do that, my advice is consider what was there before and what has the plan tried to do afterwards. Make sure you clearly have in your head the issue, what were the problems in terms of the people, the area, the society, money as well. What aspects of the issue has the plan solved? And what has the plan potentially not solved? Let's go through this in detail. This is from question paper 13, November 2024. In some energy seas, the government is providing low cost building materials to people living in squatter settlements like the one shown in figure 2.3. There's the image. Is this strategy likely to be successful in improving the quality of life for the people who live in squatter settlements? Justify your answer. So what do we mean by quality of life? Well, that is certain things like do you have water and electricity? Do you have food? Is it a clean environment to live in? All those type of things in particular to this. So the issue they're trying to solve is poor quality housing, which is certainly a big issue of quality of life. So their solution was to provide low cost building materials. So if, if a government does that, well, the positive of that is that people are able to build quality houses that are less likely to collapse. They've got good materials, not scrap materials. And most people, if it's low cost, should, you would hope, be able to afford to buy the materials. Now, notice here the language I am using. I'm not saying they will, they, sh they can, it is potentially, should hopefully. But remember, it's the quality of life. A house is not, is one aspect of quality of house, of quality of life, sorry. So think, do people have the skills to build those houses? Don't know. Do those houses have, are they being provided with electricity and water supply? Remember, slums, shanty towns, favelas, generally speaking, are illegal. So the government aren't obliged to provide them with these services. It would appear that the solution is just materials, not water or electricity. Are schools and hospitals being provided? Again, if it's slums, shanty towns or favelas, they are illegal. Governments don't, aren't obliged to do that. Are jobs being provided? And again, similar reasons why they might not be. So my response would be something like this. Well, the plan could be successful. Again, OK, 
careful in choice of language, as the local people are potentially able to build better quality houses that are less likely to collapse. As well, being low cost means that more people can hopefully afford the materials. Okay, there's some advantages to the plan. However, because the question asks you to give both sides, the plan might not be successful. And again, I've rewritten the language of the question into my response because not everyone might have the skills to use these materials to build the houses. The houses might still not be provided with water and electricity supplies as well. The areas might still not have schools, hostels and jobs to be made available to them. So again, lots of things to consider. Plan, maybe bullet, this is when you need to bullet point potential answers and keep it obvious. And here is the mark scheme. You can see here, I've reflected those various points. Okay, here's another ex example of this from uh, question paper one, two. In some LEDCs, the government is giving low cost loans to farmers in rural areas. Is this type of strategy likely to be successful in slowing down the growth of population in cities like Nairobi? Okay, so we're in LEDCs here, so you need to think kind of extremes and stereotypes, unfortunately, about the types of environments people live in, okay, and what it's like to live there. So farmers probably aren't making a lot of money. They're probably living in poor, not very well provided for rural areas. So the issue is reduce rural to urban migration and their solution for that was providing low cost loans. So another way of give farmers money. So if you give farmers money, potentially they can afford more fertilizers, machinery and maybe irrigation strategies so they can produce more food. That means that farmers have more money in the local, econ in the local economy as farmers are selling more. That boosts the rural area. And if so it means working in the rural area is more appealing. So potentially people are less likely to move to rural, uh, sorry, urban areas. But it might not be successful because more machinery means fewer jobs for people. Farmers in the rural areas tend to have larger families because they need people to work on the farm. You suddenly get loads of money, you buy more machinery, but what do you do with the people there who have already been born and want to work? So. As a result, jobs in urban areas might be better paid, so people still want to leave to get those. And there are probably more education opportunities in urban areas and generally more things to do. So again, you bring all those points together. Remember, I'm keeping it quite um, obvious, unfortunately stereotypical, of what these areas are like. So the plan could be successful as farmers can afford more fertilizer, machinery and irrigation so which can produce more food. This makes working in rural areas more appealing so people are willing to stay. This could help to boost the local economy and living standards of people. However, the plan might not be successful because more machinery means fewer jobs. People with jobs in urban areas might still be better paid and there are probably more education opportunities in urban areas. Uh, encouraging people to leave, push and pull factors. Now, a different type of justified question which came up was when you need to compare more than one plan. So again, when you've got that a bit more work, again, consider the before and after, what the plan was trying to solve, what's the issue, bullet point strengths and weaknesses of each plan, get it into your head because then that will help you write your answer, and state one with the most advantages and mention the most obvious problems with the other plans. So frustrating ones. I've got a question here from November 2054, but the images were removed due to copyright issues. However, I, if you look at the mark scheme, the previous question to this one is you had to identify the method. So please use a little bit of imagination. This is what the methods were. Okay, We had storing water in a container, um, pumped water being pumped from underground, and basically buckets. And we had to select why the advantages of using figure 6.4 wells over the other two. So you can see here, these are possible ideas. So I just use the advantages of a well, and I've put them down there, and the more obvious problems of the other two methods. So I write my answer, large amounts of water is potentially available, close to where people live, even during dry periods. Disadvantages, water is only collected when it rains, and no water if pump breaks. So again, although it's five marks, you need to plan. You need to write down some ideas and again, keep it obvious. What does it do? Think problems. OK, it's water. We're, we're in areas of Nigeria. So what do we know about that? It's hot. OK, think about you know, it's raining. If you're only thinking if you're 
only dependent on rainfall, what is the problem? If you're only dependent on a well, what is the problem? Moving on. Right, very detailed one here. You've got to read the Kepler question. It's the state the advantages of one plan and the disadvantages of the others. Again, you might fall into the trap of just doing the advantages and disadvantages of one method. No, the question states the advantages of one the compared to the disadvantages of the other. The issue is not enough housing for people living in Milan. And what do they need? As it says here, good quality housing and a lot of it. And what other benefits? Well, if you want to build housing in a city, you kind of want people to be close where they get to work and you want it to be a nice environment where they can live. So let's go through plan A. Lots of housing is being built. Closer transport links to get to work. Do not need to build on other green spaces, open spaces around the city. Lots of benefits. And it will tidy up the area, potentially making this old industrial land nicer. Lots of people in the area could lead to high crime rates, could take up Take, take time to clear land and clean up any industrial waste left on the land. And railway line could cause noise pollution for people living there. If we look at plan B, lots of green space to benefit families, close to the CBD so it helps people get to work, will tidy up the area, making it look nicer. But there are few people being housed and so might need more space to build on, loss of wildlife in the area, and rental prices or house prices could go up due to lack of supply. You're not building enough because there's, there's a high demand. Plan C, very similar points as before, but there could be some air and noise pollution from construction. So, five marks need to show a range of advances and disadvantages, at least two of each. Easier to write paragraphs, but could consider doing so like advantages, co uh, colon, write them out, disadvantages, colon, write them out. But I preferably would go down the write paragraph routes. So, here we go. This is how I did it. So, plan B was chosen straight in. Again, if you look at languages. So I've stated what my plan B, why it was chosen, and I said plan A was not chosen because plan C was not chosen because. It doesn't matter which one you look, if you look at the mark scheme, they give a wide range of points. You just choose the one that is more obvious to you. Let's take this question here. Now for this one, we can only choose the method from B, C, or D. And for this, we need to increase food supply in a poorer country. So we need to do a little bit of a table and plan possible strengths and weaknesses of each plan. So this, when you're looking at increasing food supply, you need to look at all of these different methods and which one is going to increase food supply. To do that, to increase food supply, you pretty much have to do the following. Increase the amount of water, increase soil fertility, or have more technology to help you do this. So increase farmland by removing forests. There is more, there is more land available. To grow crops because if there was a tree there the soil must be vaguely fertile and as well a byproduct of that you can sell the wood but you're destroying local habitat and you're increasing soil erosion and you're therefore reducing the fertility if you're looking at c well you are growing if you're removing cash crops that could be food like crops that drive a profit that you either can't necessarily eat um, like flowers for example you can now use that land to grow food for local people. Brilliant. But it can reduce the income for local economy and for the country. If you're increasing the fertilizers, brilliant. You are increasing soil fertility. Fantastic. Therefore, you can grow more food. You can increase the yields. And it means if you're having less money spent on importing it, which is expensive, you can have the farmers have more money to spend on other technologies to increase yields. But as you can see, all of these methods have different disadvantages. I chose D. And this is how I wrote my answer. Outline why D was chosen, and then I went through each plan and stated the more obvious advantage. And again, it doesn't matter if you go high in debt and do loads, just more in some ways in this case is better because they can just tick off accordingly. Conclusion, plan your points first. Identify the issue, identify what this plan is, what the solution is and plan what you need to know, advantages, disadvantages. Keep them obvious. Use words like potentially or may. You must remember to give both sides and include other plans if stated. Go away, practice these responses. These are only the examples I've been able to find uh, that are more recent. Again, as we have the new syllabus gets rolled out, there'll be more questions. 
but I advise all of you to practice these questions because they could come up in preparation for the new syllabus on the current syllabus. Thank you for watching.